we take this opportunity to acknowledge the leadership of the economic freedom fighters and ground forces of the now 10 years old economic emancipation movement. We also acknowledge the leadership of the opposition parties in parliament and all members of parliament. We took the opportunity provided to sponsor a discussion in the National Assembly, guided by the founding manifesto adopted by the Economic Freedom Fighters National Assembly on what is to be done. Held on the 26th of July, 2013, 10 years ago, to formally introduce the relocation of the seat of parliament bill, a private member bill where we are sponsoring. There are both political and practical reasons why this bill is important and will deal with both of them. But also, there are financial implications which the EFF Project General Committee will deal with. The EFF Founding Manifesto calls for the one city, Tswane, as the administrative and legislative capital of South Africa. Politically, the decision to have the legislative capital in the city of Cape Town while the administrative capital is in Tswane is as a result of the Anglo-Boer War Ferenc and Peace Agreement between the Boers and the British signed in 1902. This agreement brought an end to the Anglo-Boer War. Later on, when the Union of South Africa was formed after the 1907 colonial conference held in London, there was an agreement that the Cape Town become, became, become the seat of parliament while Pretoria now trying to become the administrative capital and Bloemfontein the judicial capital. Africans were not represented because we were treated as less than human beings with no right to self-determination. Today, we do not, we do not have a reason to continue upholding this colonial and racial pact that the Liberation Party has imposed on our people. This is the same party that continues to impose this term in the national anthem on all of us. The same way they continue to impose on us Paul Kruger at Church Square in Twani, the statue of Louis Bota here outside parliament, and the colonial imperialist racist Victoria behind the National Council of provinces chambers. The ANC continues to uphold and defend the colonial and apartheid racist pact that was made and never envisaged that one day will attain political freedom to self-determine as people in charge of their own destiny, including deciding on the seat of parliament and administration, administrative arms of the state. The ANC continues to uphold and protect the colonial and racist economic pact to exploit and exclude Africans from participating in the economy as anything more than cheap labor. This and many other colonial and racist apartheid pacts and agreements continue to maintain and uphold the political and economic structure that benefits just under 5 million people out of the total population of more than an estimated 60 million. All those who continue to benefit from the colonial and racist apartheid pacts protected by the Liberation Party are the ones who will object to the bill that seeks to address the senseless and irrational arrangement in democratic South Africa. House Chair, over and above the need to address the political question, the need to take a decision ourselves that we can proudly claim as our own, and a decisive break with, with the past to continue to in insist that we retain parliament here in Cape Town has a serious democratic and political consequences. The National Assembly and National Council of Provinces are elected by the people to represent the people. We are elected to provide national forum for public consideration of issues that affect all our people. Section 59 of the Constitution demands that the National Assembly facilitate public involvement in the legislative and other processes of the Assembly and its committees. The reality and experience of past post-apartheid South Africa for many of our people is that Parliament is nothing but an institution that forms part and parcel of elitist and inaccessible institution, both politically and practically. 
they cannot access this place. They cannot afford to travel to Cape Town to participate in any of the assembly, council, or committee meetings. East London is more than 1,000 kilometers from Cape Town. Kabecha is more than 700 kilometers from Cape Town. Bloemfontein is more than 1,000 kilometers from Cape Town. Kimberley is more than 950 kilometers from Cape Town. Tuan is more than 1,400 kilometers from Cape Town. Pulukwani is more than 1,709 kilometers from Cape Town. Nelson to Cape Town is more than 1,700 kilometers away. Deben to Cape Town is approximately 1,600 kilometers. Rastenberg is more than 1,400 kilometers away from Cape Town. These are the major towns of the three provinces, Eastern Cape, Free State, and Northern Cape, that borders Western Cape, and still many of our people in these places cannot afford to travel to participate in any of the assembly, council, or committee meetings. Those in Gauteng, Limpopo, Northwest, Free State, KwaZulu Natal, and Pumalanga are even in far west situation. We do not have affordable and safe public transport for many of our people to travel this long distance. Parliament has so far been a playground for associations representing the private sector, unions out of touch with the reality, and NGOs funded by George Soros and the Oppenheimers, while our people are excluded. We continue to receive submissions, particularly oral submissions from the same individuals. The voice of our people is marginalized in part due to location of this institution. This is why we must relocate the seat of parliament to Tswane in Khauten province. It is bordered by Limpopo to the north, Mpumalanga to the east, Free State to the south, and Northwest to the west. Many of our people in the Northern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal can travel more easily to Khauten compared to traveling to Cape Town. This private member bill to relocate the seat of parliament is an act to make this parliament the parliament of many of our people. Our people must come to parliament to participate and become part of holding the executive accountable and must become part of a lawmaking. The majority of political parties here will agree that indeed we do not make the laws with our people, but make the laws or don't make laws for them. Majority of political parties, by the way, their head office is in Khauti. It is this assembly that rejected to pass a private member bill introduced by the EFF to make clinics open 24 hours every day, a bill that will give our people life. This is while the city of Cape Town has more than 90 clinics that provide dependable and reliable primary health care services. It is this very parliament that refused to amend the constitution to allow for expropriation of land without compensation for equal redistribution in use, a legislation that will break our past with colonialism and apartheid. That debate on beneficiation of our minerals will never be relevant for as long as the land is not owned by the people of South Africa. Our people must come to parliament to engage as we hold the executive accountable. They will know that members of the ANC abuse majority to prevent, abuse their majority to prevent Parliament from investigating corruption at ESCOM when there is evidence by one of the most senior officials, a former CEO, that senior officials, including members of cabinet, are stealing money at ESCOM, subjecting all of us to preventable and avoidable electricity blackout. Our people must know that parliament was told by an independent panel chaired by former Chief Justice Sandy Lenovo that there is a prima facie evidence that Mr. Sir Ramaphosa failed to report the theft of his farm, uh, the theft on, on his farm to any police official as required by law. The independent panel report found that Mr. Sir Ramaphosa may have committed a serious violation of Section 34, Subsection 1 of the Prevention and Combating of Corruption Activities Act. Even with this evidence, the ANC once more abuses its majority and rejected any attempt to hold the president accountable. Our people 
must come to parliament and witness this madness. We will relocate parliament to Tswani in our lifetime. The, the time has come and there is nothing anyone can do about it. Whether someone likes it or not, the apartheid pact, the colonial pact, shall be broken by this generation. Whether you agree with it today or tomorrow, our generation will relocate this parliament to Tswani and make sure that majority of our people have access to this parliament. The administration and legislature must be put in one place to make the accountability of the executive more easier and to make the legislators to hold the executive accountable more easier. I thank you, the House Chair.